morning good afternoon and good evening and thanks for stopping by our dedicated team will guide you through with the latest updates and theories at starbase texas the channel be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for future streams good morning good afternoon and good evening starbase fans around the world astro joe here for rgv aerial photography Starbase Weekly Episode 104. We've got a uh, good team here with us today. I want to welcome uh, Jake and Stephanie and Ryan. Uh, we got uh, fresh off the airplane pics taken two hours ago. So um, you're all going to see it for the first time with us. Enjoy the show. And we'll move on to Ryan. Hello, Ryan. We've got one of our commentators today is Ryan Hansen. How are you going, Ryan? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's been a little bit since I was here last, so I'm excited to, to see these new developments. I know a lot of cool things have been popping up the past uh, week or so, so I'll go ahead and uh, pass it off to, to Jake. Hey, everyone. It's good to be back again. And uh, yeah, we've got a fair amount to talk about this week from the looks of things. Um, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, and as Joe said, we, uh, some of these photos are pretty hot off the press. So we'll be discovering things along with you in the crowd as well. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it back to Stephanie. G'day from, g'day from Australia. Welcome to episode 104, I believe. And yeah, let's make a start in at Macy's. And of course, the big thing would be the flame trench development. There's a few new things here to look at as well. So the flame trench seems to be going ahead nicely. They've got the, uh, the, uh, the concrete guides put in up here uh, there's been some rio cages picked up with this crane vertically so i'm assuming some of this wall is actually in place uh, to be honest i was surprised to see this soil stabilization unit still at work they must have gone around the outside and now they're that reminds me of a song and now they're going up the center here i guess to stabilize the rest before digging out the center once the walls are in place so that's all good to see. And yeah, my uh, my bit of uh, speculation with why they're still doing the soil mixing in that area of the trench is probably that's where, gonna, where the sloped end of it's going to be on one end. So they need to just strengthen that bit for the slope. That sounds like a good 
idea. Perhaps even just all the way through too, perhaps. But I thought they already did up this end, but anyway, they're still doing it for some reason. What's going on up here? So this is the first time we've seen these photos too, so bear with us a little bit as we have a little look around and try and work out what the heck they're doing. Well, there's some big bits of steel. My there guess we... is that may be some of the uh, some of the form work for those trenches there, maybe. The dividers, perhaps. Yeah. Okay, so lots more steel, ca uh, steel cages being built. They were being built over here earlier, now they're moving that operation over to here. So one of the new things we did notice straight away was this set of pillars, which doesn't seem to fit anything at the moment. It'd be interesting to see what becomes of that. Um, any thoughts there in chat? I'm happy to hear. It's hard to tell if they've dug out the ground around those or if those are technically above ground. The, uh, the tracks from presumably like a bulldozer are kind of curved off to the side there. Kind of makes it a little misleading as to whether or not the, the ground has a, a slope to it. But they kind of look like they're just above ground. So going back last week, I mean, th to the 13th, uh, they had dug that area out and there is some height difference here, which is that looks a like shadow? Be... Shadows? That is a shadow, yep. Yeah, it looks like it might be. I still think those stick up a little bit higher than that slab, but that is interesting that they've dug out around them, though. So could they perhaps be piles rather than concrete on concrete? And they seem to have an embed in the top. It's possible. Um, I mean, yeah, it's quite hard to tell really without obviously seeing what's happened in between, but yeah, it's a possibility. Oh, that's a better photo. And there is, there is a, a drop there, like you're saying. So that's the same drop. So there's no concrete underneath by the look of that. Is that right? It looks that's like all look, are we? Yeah, okay. Okay, that's that area. Let's go over here. This has been interesting. We've got ourselves a whole lot of plumbing going on. We've got some supply side over the back there and some delivery side from the pumps into the hippos. Now, Ryan, what's the plumbing underneath? Would that be to return? That's that would the... be... Um... Depends on the valve. Um, again, this is the first time I've looked at this particular photo, but um, at least with the, the orbital tank farm, what they're doing now is they basically have the pipe across the bottom and they're able to open and close a valve that can divert uh, the propellant from either going back to uh, the tank or um, toward you know where it needs to go for the, the testing. So it's possible that they might um, extend, let's see here, so yeah, that it can, may yeah, it may go in one or two directions. Um, that could come to sure. the that could go to the reclamation area, couldn't it? This up here could go back to the reclaim to reclaim the the methane if it comes from the ship. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that all gets plumbed up. Do we have and a yeah, photo that shows the other side of that uh, that concrete bunker at all, or is that get a little too far south? No, he never gets from that side because of Mexico, I guess. Okay. And um, yeah, you're speaking about a, a reclamation tank. Um, it does look like that tank we saw removed from the suborbital uh, tank farm down at the launch site earlier. They did actually end up here at Massey's. And my guess is that may actually end up being what that is, is the reclamation tank for the methane part of the tank farm here. There it is. Right there. There's nothing there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, that is straight hot off the press, isn't it? There you go. You saw it first here, guys. So she is awesome. Well done, Mauricio. Good stuff. Yeah, it was uh, pretty good timing with that. So we've got uh, four 
uh, vaporizer has been put in here. I'm not sure if these are the ones we saw at the launch site or not, but they're bigger than the one that was already here. And yeah, I think the, the, the four you see in there, they do look a little bit taller to me than what we saw at the launch site. Um, they're not as stout. So, so yeah, I think they've come from somewhere else. Yep. So just jumping backwards and forwards here between the sites. They've done a lot of concrete work in here, like ahead of those tank installation or and back here. Yeah, I noticed that there's a lot more concrete around the back of these methane tanks as well. So it makes me wonder what else is going to go around the back there. I wonder if that uh, reclaim tank is going to go on that back left corner where that freshly poured spot is. Because um, they had the forms up that looked pretty pretty thick uh, for a slab. And I wonder if they're going to put kind of heavier uh, tanks on top of that. That's, yeah, that's, I'd say that's a pretty strong possibility. Just here, you think? Yeah, that would be the form set up. And they recently poured it there. Yep. Yep, that does sound about right. And yeah, through the, uh, I'm not going to say I know how that reclamation system works. I'll just leave that there for now. <laughs> and there is um, there is something else we know that's slightly different with these subcoolers as well, is the outlets out the top of them. They only seem to be using two outlets on each of the subcoolers, unlike the subcoolers at the orbital tank farm where they use all four outlets. Oh, and yeah, the pipe book is a bit, yeah, and the pipe book is a lot thinner as well. It's a bit interesting, and that would be for the uh, the gaseous uh, nitrogen after it uh, is able to change yeah. the temperatures. So. We know that they like to pressurize that uh, to keep the methane from freezing. So maybe that's the smaller diameter reasoning. Well, they've got the valves that's... installed again as well, like on the suborbital tank farm for the exhaust of those nitrogen gases, nitrogen outlets. And they've also got the smaller outlets slightly further back on the subcooler as well, by the looks of it. If you look at where the, the other end of that pipe work. So not the end of it, yeah. So there, that looks maybe similar to what they've got going on at the launch site. Okay. So they've got main valves on one end, and then they've got these other smaller valves on the other end. Yep. I wonder why they chose to put the uh, pumps above ground over here, if, uh, if there's any reasoning to that, or maybe they just wanted to keep them above ground. Yeah, that's been my uh, question as well, is why exactly they made this decision. Um, like I say, it might just be easier access. Is that a T? Are they T's down there? Yeah, they've got the pipework running right around the back of that uh, bunker as well, by the looks of it. It kind of appears like they can run one or yeah. two pumps by cutting off one of the pumps here, and they can go around the other way. You know, it's possible the reclaim actually would be that top um, pipe. Um, yeah, right there, because notice the valves um, that are currently behind the pumps um, on the right side there. They're to the right of the T, which presumably maybe they are pumping to the right toward the, uh, the flame trench, and they can use those to cut off uh, flow from a particular pump if they you know don't want to run both. Um, or they could shut both of these valves kind of here behind the pumps, and that would cause all of the um, the drain back to go up that that pipe there to the the top left. So, so a thing with the pumps, so I'll put the chillers after the pumps, won't they? Like a tank pump chiller. I like that. Do it. That is a good point. I like to do it. The old tank farm. So I think this is to do with the reclamation down here. But um, these valves, I'm not discounting what you're saying, devaluing it. These will have something to do with possibly being able to use one or two pumps, but it doesn't look right either because they're not in line there. So I say it'd be interesting to see what this all looks like in the near future. Yeah, that is a good point because it, it seems like they've kind of flipped the flow around because normally in the orbital tank farm, they pump from the bottom up. But if they're plumbing it this way, that would mean that they're filling the subcoolers from the top down. That's a good point. I just They'd be pumping that through that the subcooler. Out. Yep, that's correct. Might have to look at that a little closer.
They wouldn't be right. sucking up through the hippos, would they? No. I don't think those types, yeah, those types of pumps I don't think are good at, um, no. uh, the, like, under vacuum. They're more so just pushing. Um, I think that's what Dave Avery has said in the past. So um, unless these are a different pump than what they have at the, the orbital site. Well, I'm going by Dave's words too. They usually put the pumps before because the pumps uh, input a bit of heat energy into the cryogenics, which is suboptimal. So we've got the tanks getting hooked up. We'll be able to see more and more of that as they do more of this plumbing. Oh, they haven't got the tanks hooked up. I th uh, a, photo, a photo I must have seen must have been a test fit. I thought I saw a pipe in here as well. So that's great. Awesome photos by RGV. Nice boy over. Um, yeah, we've got pipes in this trench moving back towards the tank farm. So there's, assuming liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen and high pressure gaseous nitrogen as we see in the, can I see it there? As we see in these lines here, so they're just going to be a continuation, obviously through the hippos for the locks. For the locks. And, the and yeah, west we're, and west we're in that area, we see not too much has changed with connecting this part of the tank farm up to the uh, trench area. Yeah. So there's a lot of pipe works stage nearby. I guess it won't take too long when they actually start it. So I've been covered every. Oh, I've got this little thing to cover. Let's have a look at this little thing over here. Interesting. And yeah, that. I'm. Uh, and I'm curious to see what everyone else's thoughts are about this. I've got my idea. But I'm just yeah. Just want to see what everyone else thinks. So well, it looks quite strong. <laughs> looks like it's. Uh... Could be either supporting um, something or uh, covering something. Um. So, Jake, your idea, I think, was to be part of the the top here. The yeah, it, where you have yeah, so it'll cover. So, yeah, so that'll probably be on the end where the uh, where the ships will actually be mounted above the flame trench. That's my guess. Um, Seems to match pretty closely with dimensions, and it looks pretty sturdy for something like that. Yeah, I do or agree with I that. I could be totally wrong. <laughs> yeah, I do agree with that. I think that um, if they're going to do the static fires here, and they're going to have the ship uh, where it's at, you know, pushing down into a uh, a trench, you probably don't want to, you know, have the all that energy bouncing back up off the concrete, especially if they have a, a slope that goes um, upward. You might want to cover... A little bit to try and um, push that energy away from the ship. That way, you're not, you know, cracking tiles or knocking tiles off potentially. So, just on further inspection, there's four of these, and they look like that width. And there's four because uh, we were looking just a bit earlier and counting. If you went every odd one of these, that doesn't match the pedestals up there. <clears throat> But you could put four of these under that and be mounted on there. And so that's, phew, there's various things this could be at the moment. And I mean, that these could also be to do with when it gets put in the trench. It's hard to say. I think the, um, yeah, and I think the leading theory with those U pieces, the U shapes, is um, that might be the actual sort of like bucket in the trench, maybe. It's the sort of, you know, reinforcement. So they're not firing literally just straight at concrete, but rather the actual metal. Yeah, they would look very similar to like a flame deflector that I think that Relativity has, where they've got like a pipe structure uh, that, you know, essentially the flames would fire against that kind of shoots water. So that could definitely be related to uh, some sort of a deflector structure. Now, Jake, you're saying there were some end beds down here that have moved. Where did you say they were? They're right next to the uh, the framework we were just talking about. Oh, that's right, just in here. Yep. So, yes, yeah, so what we're seeing now is that should 
we're seeing the undersides of them facing upwards. So wherever they're due to go, they'll be flipped over and then obviously, well, embedded in the concrete. I see what you're saying. Yep, that, that, those, those bits of steel get buried in the actual concrete. Yep, awesome. But it'd be um, interesting to see if they're actually going to join on with this framework possibly or if there's just this just happens to be the the construction area of all different parts of the trench. I wonder uh, if they could uh, put them, could they maybe go on the sides? Because the sides of these beams are actually sloped, which means they kind of tells me they're going to interface with something that has a, a sloped face. So I wonder if maybe those embeds are maybe tying, like if this is indeed the top of like the tunnel, um, could they maybe tie those embeds into some sort of a, a structure? It doesn't look like there's actually enough of those embeds, but uh, if they were to lower this down and pour concrete around it, that might tie it down and keep it from kind of popping up with uh, pressure waves maybe. But I doubt the pressure waves would lift this heavy structure. There's a, um, it's... a little lip here, like a, see the got yeah. edge higher, like something's going to sit inside it too. Which makes sense because I don't think it's going to be literally just framework like that. There will obviously be stuff over the top if they ever need to, you know, obviously get across the trench at all. Something to be able to walk over and drive machinery onto. Okay, what else in this area? That's pretty well lit. That hasn't changed much up that area. There hasn't changed much. Uh, last, I think that. Uh... Uh... Go on. I said, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything for the top of Marcy's. Oh, they're still delivering concrete. I guess that's a concrete. I mean, cement, sorry, cement dust. Cement being an ingredient in concrete, also an ingredient in the slurry, I think. So there's cement and ben um, bentonite. Okay, the... This area, where was an interest? Also, just uh, I noticed uh, a suggestion from someone in the chat about what that framework might be. They said it's a toaster rack. <laughs> a heavy duty camper toaster rack. There's uh, some pretty big, big pieces of toast. <laughs> I like it. Very good. So yeah, we've seen these embeds in here. And we can just see them sitting out. So they've done all the pile caps and still nothing to show what size tanks they're mounting yet. And lots of new concrete. It's always good to see new concrete. I think over here. Oh, that was done last time. Yeah, talking about the um, tanks, I'm, I'm still pretty adamant it's going to be two tanks. Uh, maybe similar diameter to what the new ones at the launch site, but shorter. Yep, that seems about right. Is that more? Oh, no, I thought that was more pipe work staged, but it's not. It's just some steel work. Interesting. Yeah, it's a bunch of rebar, which they need plenty of uh, masses at the moment with all the new concrete being poured. Okay, so we've got this. We saw piles getting drilled here. I can see the piles sticking through. So that's getting ready for the pile cap by the look of it. It's a fairly deep sort of trench. It's going to be fairly substantial, whatever they put here. So there's a few ideas on this. Maybe another cryo station or maybe a, some kind of building. I'm not sure yet. It's very cleaned right up. Yeah, I mean, it, I know there's been talk. I, I wouldn't say they go there, but there's been talk of maybe these cryo stations for the ship and the booster actually moving at some point. Um, so they're not so close to the flame trench, well, the booster cryo station anyway. Um, but I'm not 100% sure what's going to go with this new part because my original speculation is that the embeds we were talking about just now may go in this pad at the front, but of course, those embeds are now gone up the other direction, so that kind of rules that out. Where's the Cap for the can crusher. That's the right that's there. It. 
You're on it, yeah. But it's different, isn't it? The... They've taken the, um, I don't know, maybe just like, you know, they just repainted it again. Um, oh, it's make, yeah, it's missing the framework and the side of it, possibly. That little triangular yeah. piece of framework. And the stuff inside and those two things. Yeah, yeah. That tricked me for a second. I'm thinking, hang on, where is it? That's it, but it's not the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, that... oh, go on. I said, yeah, that end of Marcy's has gone gone pretty quiet lately. It's uh, been a while since we've used, seen the can crash she used. And, of course, the nose cone cage is just sort of sitting there, not really doing much at all at the moment. So this building's pretty well finished. All the groundwork's been covered up. They did some trenching here, some concrete and some air conditioning going in. Um, Joe, got any questions and donations, please? We'll get that out of the way for now. For Macy's, we can move on then, I think. Indeed, sure do. Uh, our questions bot is broken, so I want to thank Dave Avery for feeding questions to me. Got a question from Cinti. Um, is there a concrete slab in the way of the would-be flame trench? Will it divert upwards, or will they remove that slab? Uh, no, this was all cleaned up, <clears throat> and and this soil stabilization unit has been through all this area. Is he, so, is he probably, if he's talking about the slab right at the top there, that's brand new. That's, uh, yeah, so that won't be going anywhere. Um, and it's speculated with this flame trench, it will actually divert sort of upwards and not outwards. Yeah, I think maybe the underlying question is, you know, how they would maybe pull the vehicles around and get them over the actual flame trench. And I think they they might use that road that they're kind of, you know, still kind of working on a little bit to, to go around the outside. And then uh, because the flame trench would start um, a little bit forward from that road, um, they'd probably just bring up the SPMTs, turn the wheels 90 degrees and do that kind of sideways crawl um, to get the ship actually over um, the hole in which it would mount on. So they don't necessarily have to drive directly onto it. They could kind of, you know, crab walk over it, which that does, you know, bring up a lot of, you know, questions about you know, how exactly they're going to have a, a hole, but be able to get the ship over it. So I think that's one of the big things I'm excited to see is how they're going to, you know, handle that whole aspect of having a giant hole, but also needing to move over the top of it. Uh, but no, there's no concrete through here if that was the question too. Thanks, Joe. All right, another one from Cinti. Um, any signs of deluge infrastructure to complement the suspected CH4 tanks and kettles? Uh, water Nothing deluge. yet. It's a good question. They're probably going to need some kind of water deluge. I mean, that's... I did, uh, I did have my wacky little theory that I know most people probably don't agree with it right now. Um, it could That could be related to it. Um, but where those two new tanks are going, maybe they maybe be water tanks, and maybe the second trench going over towards that area, maybe for pipe work for the water, for a water deluge system. I mean that's it's still too early to tell, but yeah, that's it's a possibility, I think. Uh, no, the quest, the answer to that's no. We haven't seen any concrete evidence of a water deluge system, but we do see. Plenty of areas available. Like that whole area is going to be available, which is in a good spot for it, a very good spot for it. This whole area is still available, which is also a good spot. Down here is not a good spot, I guess. So I'm going to guess they're going to have water deluge up here. Jake's going to guess it's over here. That's fine. We love those, up, those uh, differing speculations. That's what this community is all about. Yeah, I'd agree with you, Stephanie. I think they they might wait to uh to put it up there in that that top right corner a little bit. Yeah, it will be interesting to see what how they're actually going to supply the water. You know, will it be just tanks like they've done at launch site, or will it be, dare I say, an actual water tower? Okay, next question, Joe, and donations. All right, Tibin and uh, just made a statement. Wasn't it only a month ago that they built the booster pads? LOL. Oh, longer ago than that. It seems like yeah. that. I don't know, a lot of things in Starbase seems like, didn't they just put that down there? They're ripping it up again? Yes, I get that very much. Right. Nothing's permanent in Starbase, basically. 
I do. Well, well. <laughs> exactly. I want to thank um, Drew Nar, two Canadian dollars. That metal frame going on the pillars for bunker. That's a bit close to be a bunker, but I guess that's a possibility. I can't see any reason other than it being a bit close that it couldn't be a bunker. It's sort of built strong enough. Now, the other bunkers, they're all built on the ground, though. I'm not sure about being on pillars. That's an interesting thing. Wait. I was going to say, they got the new, um, the new bunker at Sanchez, and that was actually, the, the floor of it is actually built a bit off the ground. Uh, um, so they may be just, yeah, doing the same thing here, because if you look how close they are to the water here, it would make sense to have a, an electrical bunker of some kind raised off the ground like that. Not a bad idea, honestly. Another question related, uh, Rankly. Rankly, yes. How far away from the main road is the future static fire stand and will road closures need implemented? Um, I could bring up maps if you want. It's, uh, what is the distance? So it's a good mile or so, isn't it, from the highway? Yeah, off the top of my head, it is about a mile from what I remember people saying. Um, could be, yeah, worth double checking though. Which is interesting because... Yeah, it, it should mean they'll actually still need road closures when testing like that does occur at Massey's. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see how they deal with that because that's basically blocking access into the whole of Starbase when they close that road there. Let me have a quick look here. Oh, just one second. You'll have to excuse me a little bit. We're doing a bit of downloading in the background here because the flight wasn't very long ago. Well, I can take up some dead air and thank Dave Avery for gifting five memberships. Todd Bernal, $10 super chat. Let's get this train choo choo in. Steve Coates, $1.99. A couple bucks for the cause. Rocket Profit, thank you. All aboard. $10 train rolling out. Choo-choo. Sharpie with $5. Same choo-choo. Drunar, chugga-chugga. Five Canadian dollars. And we're all caught up. Thank you. Thank you all for your support. Thank you very much for your support. That's awesome. Appreciate it all. Um, I'm not on Google Earth. So it's a fair way in. I'm pretty sure it's like a mile in there. And whether we whether they need um, road closures, not entirely sure. So there's a good chance they will. But, I mean, even if they do, it's no different to having to do static fires over the launch site anyway. So I think that's not really a major thing either way, to be honest. One thing to mention on that, too, is just because they set up the roadblock for static fires at the launch site where they do, at least for the ships, um, doesn't necessarily mean that that's where they have to. It's more so that where they set it up is kind of like the last road uh, that kind of meets with the main highway. So there's really no reason to have it any further down the highway since there's nothing to access down there in the first place. So it's possible they only need like a mile uh, radius around the actual site. Yeah, I'd like to think that. Yeah, the more I think about it, there is probably a possibility there won't actually be roadblocks for testing, uh, for static fire testing and masters. Otherwise, that's just it's just going to cause issues if there is. Okay, well, let's move on to Sanchez then. Okay, so a big thing that's happened in Sanchez is they've moved ship 26 off the engine testing stand, which had a very short stay there. So the crane had the squid on and lifted ship 26 up onto a stand, which was then put in the rocket garden. And then ship 28 came out to join the party on the engine install stand. And thanks to Jax, I, I probably could have found it, but thanks to Jax, there's some engine shielding already taken off 
and I think Jake spotted it, the engine stand, stand truck is up underneath. So we're either going to get an engine swap or there is definitely work or something going on underneath. Well, yeah, n- not quite underneath yet, but it is staged right in one of the openings, ready, well, as if it's ready to move under. Um, but this is the thing worth mentioning. We're seeing this engine shielding sitting around, and we're seeing that raft of trucks sitting there. But is that all to do with ship 28, or was it all to do with ship 26? Because, obviously, we don't actually have confirmation that all the engines were taken off 26. But they they may have already come off. Um, it's pretty hard to see what goes on over down that area these days, seeing as, obviously, Remedios Avenue is mostly closed off now. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're not 100% sure what exactly what we're looking at there. So, very good point. So, Jake, thank you. And we've managed to capture the new version two two point lifting frame in all its glory, which is awesome to see. Well, I wouldn't say in all its glory. It still needs a bit of refining. We're uh, still getting some smashed tiles underneath the forward flaps. Yeah, I think most of that damage it's... actually occurred maybe in the was it the high bay? Uh, I think where some of that damage was, because it's had some damage on it for some time now, I think before it even rolled out to the, the engine install stand. So, um, yeah, there's where the, the little bumper on the two-point lifter kind of contacts the tiles. and It's not really meant to crush tiles. It's kind of meant to kind of keep things aligned and keep the, uh, the ball, uh, when it goes into that socket, from smashing into the tiles, which looks like that at least mostly worked. But, yeah, it was a little bit of a hard landing with uh, the bumper there on a few of those tiles and pretty much a, a strip. There's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 tiles that need to be replaced in that area. Yeah. I mean, basically, they've they've solved one issue, obviously, when they redesigned the uh, two-point lifter, but then they just seem to create another issue when they introduced these bumpers. Can we see the bumpers? Not really. All right, let's start over at the place we normally st- start. Uh, so um, there was questions whether the turntables had been moved, and no, they still haven't been moved. So that's interesting. Let's go over to the GSC building. And like last time, there's plenty of plumbing staged. And last time at Ground Photo, we saw a great big massive pipe here. We think we know where that went on the build site. We'll cover that later on when we go to the, I mean, to the launch site. We'll cover that later on. I did notice, um, sorry, going back to just 20 years quickly, um, that they did actually remove um, another two of the Starlink dishes, or the, I should say the suspected Starlink dishes off the nose cone. So there's only just the one left on there now. Uh, um, not clear whether they'll reinstall them all again. Or, yeah, we don't really know exactly what's going on there and there's still some tiles missing in here correct yeah yeah i think we expected that 28 would be a little bit more flight ready when it left the highway but it's uh seeming that uh that's not the case and um part of me is wondering if they maybe rushed it over here to uh do at least one engine swap because they may have found something in some final closeouts maybe in the engine bay um because it seemed like it was kind of brought over here pretty quickly but um i guess we'll have to wait and see if they do what they need to do and then run it back to the high bay or or what they decide to do okay moving on thanks so they've cleaned this area up significantly there are some big pipes here we couldn't see this wash station because of these great big pipes, so they've all been staged. We still have this bare bit of dirt here. Looks like we're getting ready for some concrete in this area, finally. You can see they've, um, oh, they've been doing some groundwork at the top, in the top corner as well, by the looks of it. You can see the excavators up there. No idea what 
yeah, no idea what's actually going to be happening up there, but yeah, it's just a little detail we notice. They've uh, painted the communication building dark grey, which is nice. It fits in with the rest of the building. Now let's do stands. So I got a bit sidetracked there. I'll go back to stands for a second. So they have been working on this stand a little bit. It seems to have slowed right down. There seems to be no extra work done on the new stand, the new transport stand. No, it's yeah. I think we had a bit of discussion about it yesterday. Don't don't really. There's not really an urgent need for more transport stands at the moment. Not whilst they've uh, obviously got the workstations in Mega B One. Um, it's only really when things start. Well, if things start backing up with more boosters, then Mega B One can deal with. That's when obviously they'll need all these extra transport stands be a case too that um we, we saw them have issues with the first one um when they had the booster on the pad last um with the, the lift i think it ended up being delayed by quite a bit so it's possible they might just be trying to um you know iron out all the kinks on it and you know if they need to change anything um, along the way they might be implementing that directly on uh, the second one um, as they're going so just holding off on the third one until they get the, the first and second uh, squared away Yep, that could be, a, that's a good thought. So the next ship installation, oh, new tanks. The next ship installation stand seems to be significantly more finished than last time. We've got the top pieces put in, the clamps have been put in, and the legs for this, as far as I know, are in Mega Bay 2. There's its platform looking nice and ready to go. Yeah, so it shouldn't be too long until we actually see that stand fully assembled and in use. And we've got a new thing. We saw these uh, stands get the, down here, these stands get put here last time. and didn't work out what they were. I think we assumed they were for the third ship install stand. We haven't seen any start on the third ship install stand either yet. I think what you're looking at there may be... Uh, actually, no, it might, no, it might be another for the third installation stand. It you is interesting it. that it's got the, uh, the three symmetry going on, which is um, a little bit different. I'm not sure if that was present with, or at least in the beginning stages, um, of the other stands or not, but um, it is a little bit different considering a lot of the, the ship stands have six clamps, even though they technically only use three um, for you know launch or actually stacking on top of the booster. So that kind of makes this one a little bit more unique, I think. Well, it doesn't look anything like the platform or the stand. The yeah, yeah she... my first thought was maybe something to do with the, uh, the hot stage ring, if they're making some sort of a, a jig for that. Um, cause that technically would have the, the three, um, points on it for connecting. So, um, yeah, I'm not really sure if, you know, if they need, I mean, they're obviously producing the hot staging rings right now, just fine, but maybe they've figured out they need a, a jig for that. Oh, yeah, three see, that was, yeah that, that was my other thought as well is we may be looking at part of a new jig year for star factory because, um, obviously they did work on, uh, one of the jigs for the nose cone area of Star Factory in this area. So, yeah, it's entirely possible. That's what's going on there. Oh, they've brought... I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, they were there last time in the last flyover. That's, that's the new engine... Ship installation engine stand there. And the ladders. There was ladders there last flyover too. I guess they're for inside... Uh, Mega Bay One, where they go up to the top of the work platforms. I 
Okay, so that's engine install stand, that's the stand work and GAC work. Let's go on to the tower section work. Now, an interesting thing was we saw them test pit uh, this. Oh, look, they've got two set up, two pull bases set up ready for legs. They test pit this leg on here through the week, I think. Starship Gazer, I got a photo of it. And um, but then then they laid it back down again. Or was it this they, one? Um, uh, yeah, it might be one of those two. Um, it was actually seen that they may have actually had a bit of an issue trying to put that pillar on the leg because um, they did actually take a torch to the plates on the on the stand. So yeah, maybe things were getting a bit cold. Um, no idea if they've sorted it out yet or not, but. Yeah, it looks like they didn't go quite as smoothly as they hoped. It would be this one's the most ready with those braces in already, so I guess they're working on this one first. Yeah. Oh, there's, a there's a leg there. There it is. <laughs> Which I can't remember. I thought these stands technically had more bracing kind of between them, but I may be misremembering on that. But yeah, I'd expect them to test fit on one that at least had some bracing. Yeah, you're right. They did have more bracing, but um, I did notice that ones at Roberts Road, they did seem to just do away with a lot of the bracing there for the second lot of tower sections. So maybe they just realised they didn't really need all the bracing. So they've moved the legs all out of this area here. That's all cleaned up. Not that it means anything significant. And this is the piece that uh, holds the actual pulley at the top of the tower, I believe. It's, uh, yeah. it's 40, yeah. 45 degrees offset to the rest of the tower and sticks out over the edge, out over the side. The sticky outy bit. So yeah, you have your four, um, uh, I can't remember what they're called now, the four sheaves, is that what they're called? The four, that the, the wire runs over. Uh, they'll sit on top of that, and then you'll have your uh, chrome block sits on the underside of it. That sits right above the top of the carriage on the um, on the chopsticks. Yep, there's all sorts of pieces. There's some of the cross, some of the horizontal pieces ready for the diagonal pieces. Like one big Meccano set, except you don't guys don't call it Meccano, do you? They're still digging trenches for drainage, I guess, and power. And now we've got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, bases now. So we're still sort of missing two bases, really, aren't we? Seems like that might just be it. Maybe just the seven bases. Because I can't really see anywhere else where they would put them now. Another two, possibly. Two sets. No, they'd have to cut holes, wouldn't they? Yeah. They may just not be expecting to have all of the, the sections here at one time. Possibly they may build some and then have you know a new set come in and so they maybe don't need a spot for every section. Plus they might also like be in, um, leaving spaces for things like like chopsticks on the carriage as well, along the course of QD arm. Yep, yeah, it's going to get uh, a lot of equipment's going to get put in here very soon. It'll be very, not very good to see. Uh, so while we're on this sort of photo here, this is interesting. Some we new have, parking. Uh, yeah. So, seeing as though they've marked out the car park spots, does that mean soon they'll park things over it or cut a piece out or? turn it into something else because car parking seems to be one of the most temporary things at Starbase lately. And yeah, we might have to do with uh, that new parking ramp that has been uh, talked about. If you know they're going to try and push people to park over here, uh, that way they can get started with that project. Yeah, I was just about to say the same thing. This, you know, this is making sense now why there's all this extra parking at the front now because they might be about to lose the other car park. Was to uh, create this new multi-story building. So uh, there's been a few questions as to where that new car park could go between here, uh, down here, or here, 
or over here, but it seems, I think mostly I'm getting the vibe that this is going to be the spot right here. It makes, it makes a lot of sense, really, putting it there. Yeah, you want, you know, easy access to your parking structure. If you put it clear at the back of the site, you know, you're going to have traffic jam of people moving, you know, throughout the site, and it's probably not ideal. Yeah, I totally agree there with that. Little temporary storage spot for the scrapyard, I believe. Actually, while we're here, what is going on at the scrapyard? Oh, yeah, we've had some... Have we had some scrappage? No, we've had some movage. Something got scrapped. Oh, that's that The stand. booster stand, I think. Yeah. Because these two were parked in there, I thought, last time. Yeah, I'm sure the scrapyard will move again in about two months' time. It's uh, oh, no. it in one place. It is one of the most mobile stations that you can have there, as you know, basically just wherever you can put a dumpster is where you can cut some stuff up. So, it's uh, it's probably the easiest thing for them to move around as they need space here and there. So this is last week uh, on the thirteenth, sorry, and looks like they've scrapped this article, this article, and this article. Yeah, Sam is just saying in the um, chat for obviously Sam from the Ring Watch is saying it's the uh, S thirty three forward section. Um, and our coupon quad, and of course, forward. see the boost forward. transfer stand. Is, yeah, that's it. Forward down, yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, while we're in this little area, we'll jump over here. So it looks like they've oh, they poured this slab. That's one thing they've done. We should see a new tank. Perhaps go here, I'm guessing. Pretty good indication it's going to be a new tank. And um, we've got some formwork. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. We've got some formwork going. It looks like fairly deep concrete again. Something. This is strange. It kind of... That green okay. pipework on the left, it does sort of look like it's going to be coming straight up out the ground there. So maybe that's going to be. Uh, one of the offload points for filling the tank there. Filling the yeah. Well, there's lots of those little pipes here. Oh, yeah, there's quite a few, actually. And this is kind of... With the boxing, they've cut the concrete here, dug down deep below the concrete, and now they're using the concrete here for the supports here. That's a, bit, a little bit unusual, but something that can be done just to hold the box, the formwork up. In Australia, look we'll Yeah, I did... Uh... I did have to laugh at what they did in this area. They cut trenches into the ground, put pipework in the trenches, and then they just cut up the rest of the concrete around the trenches rather than just cutting the whole concrete up in one big thing like this and then putting the pipework in. It was all a bit, I don't know, back to front. It makes you think how much of it is afterthought as they go along, sort of making it up as they go along or what. Which I guess is okay, I guess, to a certain extent in areas like this. It's not rocket science part of the whole endeavour. Probably gives the engineers a bit of a bit of education, let them sort of go freelance a little bit. So we've got um, some rebar here to go in there. I was going to say, I'm sure that's one of the requirements of working for SpaceX and, and Starbase is how good are you at breaking up concrete? <laughs> Or, or putting in the design that we need to break up concrete. Yeah. Oh, that's a different area. What's going on here? That's more build site anyway. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens with this area next to Mega B Two. When they've stopped using it for staging of all those materials. You know, okay. my thought it may be it might they might extend the rocket garden that way towards Mega Bay too. Yeah, I have two thoughts. This area is either another Mega Bay or yeah, the uh, rocket garden gets extended. It'd be a perfect spot for a rocket garden. I could even probably go too deep. I guess there's going to be a time where we're going to get airframes stacked up a little bit as production increases and then 
whatever happens with launch cadence, I guess there's going to be a store, and they're not quite as easy to store as Falcon 9's in a hangar, so they need somewhere fairly yeah. large to have all these things. Yeah, the storage is going to have to increase quite a bit in the future. Um, the current rock garden just, well, it's not really big enough for the future. I mean, in theory, they really shouldn't need a rocket garden if you're, you know, you're building and launching at the cadence you need. So I, I wonder, you know, how large of a rocket garden they really want versus, you know, if they just have another bay to, uh, for ship construction and kind of do everything within those two bays. Well, here's trying to get an angle on that truck. So that's the stand. So it's not, that's where a Raptor comes down there. So it's not actually underneath yeah. it no but it is staged right next to an opening underneath the um, stand and they haven't you can't that. see go on. I said yeah you can't see it so much from this side but from the other side it's very uh, clear to see exactly where that truck's lined up I think one other thing that was mentioned too is if you go up um, toward to the right here past those SPMTs um th yeah there's three stands for the rvax right there so um there was an intent at least to possibly remove three rvac engines from a vehicle again they don't know if that was maybe s26 or you know maybe they're doing a a deep uh, maintenance on s28 so we'll have to keep an eye on those yeah i'd suggest ship 26 because uh, if ship 28 is going to fly you wouldn't think We'd hope they didn't need to pull three RBACs out, whereas Ship 26, it's sort of destined to have its engines removed, I think. So um, there was talk that there's uh, vents covered up by those stringers on Ship 26 now as well. So a lower stabilisation point and some of the vents have been covered up by those stringers. So it's looking more and more like Ship 26 won't, Flies, sorry, for all you SIP 26. Yeah, so I'm still pretty <laughs> baffled. Uh, I'm still pretty baffled by all these stringers. What what are they actually doing with that ship? It's all very peculiar. Okay, well spotted. Thanks, Ryan and Jake. Uh, so, Joe, we've got some questions and donations, please, for Sanchez. Uh, well, I want to thank a little bit of support from Leroy Hibbs for a five-pound super sticker saying great job. No message attached with it. I have not had any Sanchez questions uh, fed to me. I have not seen any in the chat, but um, I do want to pull the stereotypical YouTuber comment vibe thing saying, hey, uh, if you're watching in full screen or on a mobile device, don't forget to you know go back and hit that like button for us. Thanks, everyone. All right, yeah, hit like, subscribe, and join if you feel up to it. Thank you very much. Well, that either means we're doing a great job at commentary or people are shy to ask questions. So we're going to move on to the build site, and feel free to ask other questions with the other sites as we go along. That's all good, and we're happy to answer anything. Well, with your Yeah, let's say, uh, don't, don't, don't be... Uh... Definitely don't feel too shy to ask questions because I find that's one of the best ways of learning new things. I'll just give me one minute here to go to the build site. It's one minute. Yeah, I do wonder with the uh, parking ramp project if that has any indication on the future of the Stargate building, if they, um, depending on how close they, they build to it, if they're going to leave room for a potential you know remodeling or destruction of that or you know if we can determine anything from that my um yeah my understanding is spacex don't fully own that building do they start target building i don't think isn't that so. still, it's still part of the um the rio grande university isn't it we might have to have somebody check on that for us. I mean, I, I heard some conflicting things in the past about how SpaceX maybe have took it over, but um, not entirely sure. But yeah, last time I checked, that that, that building there is actually still on the um, the Rio Grande University website. They are still right. using photos of it there. It kind of looks like the car park would fit in here without 
actually disturbing that building if they just keep it. Yeah, yeah, it's. I guess it's more yeah about access and exits and whatnot. Yeah, if they build right up against it, I mean, it's not going to leave a whole lot of room between, you know, the buildings, um, you know, especially if they wanted to do something in the future kind of behind it, um, it you know, just might make building a, a secondary structure in that location kind of difficult. Okay, with that, let's go over here. Now, this one's been deliberately brightened right up so we can see inside here. We'll go here first, seems like that's where we are. Uh, we just had a message from Dave in the chat. He says, yeah, it is still, um, Stargate is still owned by the University of, uh, uh, the, the Rio Grande University. Thank you, Dave. Is still yeah, good help. Thank you. Wow, look at the booster uh, pressurization system. It's really cool what they've done in here. It's looking more and more like an actual, you know, rocket construction factory with all these platforms and and these access structures and stuff. So it's uh it's really cool. I'm not sure if the intent of that, um, I guess we'll call it a, an upper deck, was to support the pressurization lines, but uh, certainly helps keep the floor clean um, instead of having to have that stuff up there. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. I've been loving seeing this development in Mega B One. It's just yeah, it just looks so much more, more professional. Though. Do we know what those white um, structures are that are kind of on both sides, on the, the back side? I haven't really heard yeah. anything about those. The, those are the speculated platforms that are used for... Uh, yeah, I think those, those, those ones are speculated to be the rising platforms for installing trains. So, okay, of course, you've got the new... The, yeah, you've got the new um, the V braces on the back wall, and then on the end of those V braces, you've got the a truss structure on each one, and then it looks like these white platforms then just rise up and down on the trusses. Oh, neat. Okay. So to do the uh, chines on the front, do they maybe flip the booster around, or are we maybe That's... expecting something else to show up? Uh, we're still not 100% sure about that one yet. Um yeah, cause you'd think they would turn the boosters for that. Because uh, technically yeah. the, the chines on the front of the booster are closer together than the chines on the back side of the booster. So technically the positions would be slightly different. So if they were to flip the booster around 180 degrees, it wouldn't exactly line up in the same spot. So I'm kind of tempted to think maybe they're not. Um, maybe that's not the plan, but... Um, I guess we'll have to see if they add anything to the front side to, to access the, the front shines. And the other thing I've been wondering about is if they'll ever change things up in the Mega Bay for installing grid fins maybe on the turntables um, or if they're still just happy with doing it how they do it now with just the bridge cranes, just lifting them up one by one. I can't really see the door in this, but I'll go to a grand shot in a minute. But the door, I should do that now. The door is was gone at this point. They've taken it back down again. Yeah, I think they were maybe doing some some test fits or, yeah. Because if you go back to the that last flyover photo, Stephanie, you can actually see the the um the truss section on the ground that they were lifting up and down the other day. It's right at the bottom of the doorway. There you go. <laughs> no one's going in or out. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> and you should actually see the door itself sitting nearby as well, maybe. So a little bit of a preview for you all about how the door's going to uh, unfurl. I think it was came loose here and it flapped around a lot and got shredded, I think, in the wind there one day, so they yeah, they so, never actually, they never properly threaded it into the rails, so that's that's pretty much why it was flapping around the way it was. So it's not a solid door; it's a, a fabric type door, and it's going to get lowered down with that frame and lift it back up again. So in this photo, the framework is up here somewhere. Uh, with all the there's a 
frame, yeah, there's a frame at the top there, I think. So you can see the flat bit where it, the I fabric looks flattened out. I mean, this frame. Um, the, there is actually two frames by the looks of it. There is two different frames. Um, okay. So that was speculated to be the bottom of the door, what you could see the bottom of the doorway. And then there's another frame that's actually behind all that fabric. Up in um, yeah, because yeah. there's multiple rails on the sides, I believe. So it's it's possible that the door is technically like two different sections that can both, I guess, open and close separately and be, you know, raised and lowered. So um, think of it kind of like the um, the VAB uh, at Kennedy, where they've got all those different uh, plates or sections of the door. I think in this case, they basically have like two sections, but each one can kind of like raise and lower separately. And then, yeah, for anyone that didn't, you know, wasn't aware of it, this, yeah, the other th name for these types of doors is fast doors. Um, cause simply because well, they just open really fast, and that's pretty much what SpaceX needs in Starbase. Um, because it's pretty much this, this exact same design is used on Star Factory Law. Cool. Uh, let's go over to Mega Bay 2 or Ship. So I hear a lot of people saying Booster Bay and Ship Bay these days, which is an interesting name calling. Yeah, I mean, it's not obviously not the official thing, but it makes sense. Now the stands, uh, the legs have been put on a bit. Are they, these are higher than the booster ones, I think. So last yeah, time I saw the legs get put up, they quickly put the ring up on top. It seems to be taking a long time to get the ring put on top. I kind of expected yeah. 26 to come, 28 to come in here, but it's obviously nowhere near ready for that. Yeah, from what I've seen, they've been having a bit of uh, a bit of trouble trying to get these legs standing dead straight. Um, they were fiddling with them quite a lot the other day, so maybe that's why there's still no ring on it yet. So speaking of Mega Bay 2, I see a lot of the roof works completed. And uh, there's still a lot of machinery inside, uh, like aerial platforms and scissor lifts. And they haven't put the bracing in on this section. I guess that's where they're going to pull everything out with the crane out of here. And then, yeah, the other thing we've noticed, um, the the actual mechanisms for lifting the elevators are possibly, yeah, staged they're ready for installing them. Yeah, we can see them up in here from the ground shots taken, I think, yesterday, you guys' time. It's definitely something there wrapped in the blue tarp. And once again, the RGB team have done an awesome job of getting these photos together for us. Yeah, it's uh, certainly fun because uh, we're discovering all this new stuff at the same time as the audience as well. Yeah, yep. It definitely makes the stream a lot more interesting. It is pretty so, cool to see all the glass on the on the Mega Bay 2, kind of this early in its completion, because I know we waited forever for the, the first one to get glass. So to see a roof and some glass it's on the second one is, is pretty exciting. Looks uh, looks pretty, you know, complete from the outside already. And there's actually a panel of glass missing from Mega Bay 1 too, as well, still. Yeah, that's the one thing that's made me laugh, is obviously Mega Bay 1, it's obviously, that was constructed a lot, much longer ago compared to Mega Bay 2. Yes, somehow it still has a lot more scaffolding at the top. Oh, yeah, Mega Bay 2 has had no scaffolding yet at all at the top. Now, obviously, it's a different uh, installation system where they didn't need to get to the outside. They could do it from the crane and all the mechanics was done on the inside of this sec of this uh, type of system. But still. It yeah, I think easy. it's safe to say there was uh, a lot of learning with Mega Bay 1. And they've now obviously used what they've learned with Mega Bay 2. Absolutely. So I guess we can also assume very soon we're going to see all this, well, they've already started, getting all this area cleaned up and ready for concrete. 
Oh, we um we actually have a very good view of the door there as well, four mega bay one. That big that black structure. That's it. That's the actual door. Cool. Awesome. Okay, anything more about the bays? We'll go on to the Star Factory construction. That is a good photo. Yeah, I suppose it's 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 it's, uh, it's worth briefly mentioning that V thirteen is now in just two halves now. Um, so hopefully we should see the final stack of it soon. Um, that's if they haven't installed the door by then. So we've got booster ten over here and booster yep. eleven over here and booster twelve in the middle here, which is really fantastic yep. to see three boosters in workstations. That is a full on uh, awesome um, advancement there. And there we've got half of ship to uh, booster thirteen. Here and half a yep. booster thirteen here, complete, ready for final stack. Got a question yeah, regarding I... booster thirteen. Yep. Yes. Since he asks uh, if we had any eyes on booster thirteen lately. Wonder if it still has seven lock spins, and if there are any more or less methane meds. Uh, I mean, we haven't really seen that part of the uh, B thirteen properly in a while, but. I I'd guess that it's still the same. I don't think that's really something they can just change after they've actually cut out all the holes in it. No, sorry, they have asked that question. Was that San Diego? I can't quite get an angle in there. Sorry. It's it, yeah. It's it's a pretty hard one to get these days. Um, unless you go out in the mud flats and get yes the right angle. Okay. So Star Factory. Boy, there's a bit going on here. So we've got roof sections on both of the high sections now. Hello, they're building in the laneway here too. I didn't notice that before. This yep. Being added in. And of course, the front section's being added. <laughs> yeah, there's been quite a lot going on here recently. It's been pretty impressive how fast they're building this. Oh, they're still missing this little square section up here. This one here. Do you know what all those pallets are? Would that be insulation, maybe? It's roofing material. Okay. Between what well, roofing material or the insulation that goes on the roof that is insulated, whichever. And we've got new footings. Oh. Can't quite go. I'll get another photo. Let's go to this one. So we've got three new puddings. I think we're expecting one, and there's two more extra ones that are weirdly spaced. They've built out quite a bit there. There's uh, Things are getting a bit narrow at the entrance into the build site. So this is where the old bit of concrete was, as far as I remember. Yeah. Wonder how the width between those uh, footings around the end compares to the width from like the front of the building. If they're you know kind of like intending on wrapping that front structure kind of around the the side here. Yeah, I was going to say, is those two footings on the end are they actually? They don't seem to be supporting as much structure if you look at the embeds. Yeah, it looks like possibly just a single, single pillars, you know, with no trusses coming off them. So yeah, oh, I no. think what Ryan's saying, it may be, that may actually end up being the case. Sorry, hang on, let me let's see that. Was there two? There's semi uh, two. I, yeah, actually, maybe there is. Yeah. Now, come on, they wouldn't change you know, at this late stage, would they, Jake? <laughs> no, so. that's something SpaceX would never do. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, this whole side's going ahead nicely. Oh, that looks skinny, t tiny little post there compared to everything else. It's a bit different.
Is that really? Oh, this a little skinny post. Uh, look, I look skinny because it hasn't got the bridge crane. Yeah, I was going to say it looks similar to the other ones. Yeah, it just doesn't have the other parts around it. Some nice grand photos. I can't quite see that end post, but we can see here the second post for the bridge crane to sit on the bridge crane rail. Up there's the bridge crane rail for this. Oh, hang on, where is it? Yeah, I think that's it. There's a bridge crane rail up there. Yeah, and I think pretty much for the, the entire Star Factory, apart from that new front section, we can probably expect to see uh, bridge cranes running down every single aisle. Yes, agreed. So the building, they're building footings over into the tank, the tent three area, nicely. Oh yeah, and for the uh, the crane fans in chat, we do actually have a new crane there as well. That is currently working on installing the HVAC units on top of the high end of Star Factory. And that's a grabber twin, isn't it, with its wings out? Yeah. So was it GMK 7550, I think? Hopefully I didn't get that wrong then. <laughs> Better you guess than me. And they're installing these guys over here. Yeah, obviously, you know, they need quite a bit of reach uh, trying to get the HVAC units on that area of the factory. It sure is interesting to see how far this... Uh... This front section for the nose cones presumably extends out, you know, toward uh, the Stargate building because it kind of looked like for a while they were going to stop the building kind of flush with maybe the end of Mega Bay 2. But, yeah, they've, they're they really extending that out and they're pretty much almost to the doorway at this point. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely going to shut off some views of being able to, to see back there. Yeah, and I think it's looking more like the speculation about why that bit's coming so far out is uh, to cover the bit of ground they've lost on the other end. And um, uh, just to mention, Patreon members are going to get uh, a lot more images in their downloads compared to what we're showing today. A little bit unusual today in that we're um, actually doing a live stream before the Patreon members get to see their photos. So we're not showing all of the photos that Patriot members are getting. So if you want to see all the photos, especially around the village area, and et cetera, et cetera, it'd be a good idea to become a Patriot member. Um, that's just and yeah, watching. it's uh, and uh, yeah, not being biased, but it's uh, it's very much worth signing up for the RGV Patreon. You get quite a lot of money, I'd say. Oh, just downloading some launch, so it's not the time. I um, can we have some. Questions and donations, please, Joe. Indeed. I uh, just wanted to uh, thank Just Martin uh, for a 20 pound super chat. Have they got that door to work yet? I guess that was related to Mega Bay One. The answer is no. <laughs> Since it's now back on the ground again. Simply enough. Yeah, we saw that this morning. And uh, some amazing support from Pal9000, a $119.99 yeah. euro with a simple thank you, RGB team. Thank you, Pal9000. That's awesome. Dang, that's, uh, that's a pretty generous donation. We uh, really appreciate that. I think that awesome. translates to about 142 US dollars. Wow. Awesome. Well done. Thank you so much. I want to thank Rocket Profit for 10 gifted memberships. And uh, I do have a question, a couple of questions related to this area before we move too far along. Vivian and Jack, uh, where do you think the office building Kathy Loiters mentioned in her presentation last month will be built? That's a good question. Perhaps oh, in the maybe. Maybe. 
Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that one. I'm, uh, I'll be honest, that's probably actually the first time I've heard about that. I mean, it's been long speculated that we um, expect some sort of office space to be on top of the uh, the mega base, since they do have all of that uh, useful area that I don't think has really been used for anything yet. I think they've been kind of waiting for um, other infrastructure to be in place. So. I wouldn't be surprised if they do something above Mega Bay 2, um, given that it does have the elevators and um, everything, you know, kind of ready from the get-go. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'd, it really depends on how much office space they uh, they really need, if they need a separate structure or not. Plus, um, it's a nice place to obviously overlook the whole site as well. It's Yeah, I can see the offices being up there. Agreed. Liam Donald asks, uh, is the Raptor Nest for Mega Bay 2 going on the back or the side? My <laughs> speculation is it's going on the left-hand side, the side closest to Star Factory. Um, but that's simply because I've just seen a lot of conduit being run to that side. It, but that may just be for something else. It may not be nothing related to a, another Raptor Nest there. And there's an access doorway on that wall as well, rather. I mean, I can put an access doorway later on, but there's no access doorway on the back. But there is one on the side. Not sure that weighs into that argument or not. Plus, it's obviously also worth mentioning as well, you don't really need as big of a building for all the ship engines, as in footprint-wise. Yeah, I mean, the RVACs are pretty tall, but footprint-wise, they don't take up a lot of room. So, I mean, they may get by with using what they currently have on Mega Bay 2 for a while, and they may or may not build something. Uh, they technically might not need to, so that's definitely an option. All right, uh, from Folk, uh, are, are there any news on the private land? Um the trial has been delayed until May, uh, is the last word that we have on that. Chrissy asks, does anyone know when the land swap will be final and when they will be laying out the new second orbital launch site for beginning its construction? Um, I'll leave that one to Jack or Ryan. <clears throat> It's still, uh, yeah, it's still not really sure yet, because um, I still think they need the uh, permission from the Army Corps of Engineers to expand the launch site before they can really start doing any uh, proper expansion for the next orbital pad. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. We could probably get into that a little bit more when we get to the launch site, but right now I don't think that we see the land that the next tower is going to be on currently developed. I think it's going to be outside of the current boundaries. Agreed. And uh, that's all the questions I've got here related to this site. And, uh, you know, folks, uh, when you're asking your questions, please keep them relevant to the site that we're currently at. I do have a few pending questions that I need to scroll back to when we get to the launch site. Speaking of the launch site, let's head over there right now, shall we? Sounds good to me. Uh, well, that's not the launch site, is it? I was going to say, it looks a bit different these days. <laughs> not sure how that photo got in there. Thank you, Mauricio. Well, hang on. Let's just have a quick look at the village while we're here then. Um, just a couple of things we didn't speak about was this area's... Wow. The... Uh, the first aid building, everything's gone now, completely cleared. So this is also perhaps a possibility for the car park site, and it's actually under development. So Maybe. perhaps could be the car park site. Yeah. Um, just lots of, mostly we see here, much the same, lots of buildings going on, lots of new buildings, lots of buildings getting finished. Uh, just about every block of land now has some kind of construction on it pretty well now. There's not many blocks that haven't got anything on it, except obviously the ones that they don't own yet, which look kind of weird in amongst the rest. 
And uh, yeah, if if SpaceX managed to get all the extra land they've been asking for with this swap, you may see yeah the village doubling in size again in the future. Now that's new. No, it's been there for quite a while. That is, I can't remember the name of it, but that is actually a fully 3D printed building. Isn't that the old motel that was half pulled apart for a long time? No, that's completely gone. If you go to the left, um, you'll see the patch of grass there. That is where it was. There's basically oh, no okay. evidence of it anymore. It's gone. <laughs> okay, I've got, I've got my bearings a bit wrong there. Thank you. Yeah, these wide shots of the village always uh, are quite interesting to look at, just because you can see how much, how much new developments going place, you know, taking place, or you know how many employees are expecting to bring in here with the completion of the, the factory and seeing this area grow. So, it's pretty pretty cool. Okay. And yeah, for anyone that, and for anyone that did actually miss it, Starbase is actually now an, an official zip code in the US. Okay, well then this is new. How about that, Jake? <laughs> that's definitely new. Um, oh, is that the? That's not the um, the medical building that's been moved to there, is it? Or did it look uh, a bit well, different to that? Oh, hang on. Have I got the old? Because of course, Starbase still needs a medical building. They can't obviously just get rid of uh, what was there. <sighs> So I'm trying to find the last flyover. Hang on. I remember when uh, Elon kind of first started referring to Starbase as Starbase, and I think there was a, a lot of uh, pushback on that whole thing for the whole Boca Chica. And uh, you know, now that it's you know actually an official uh, town, that's actually that's pretty cool. They've kind of come a long way, and especially with uh, the name Starbase kind of being accepted in the community. So it's pretty cool to see it have its own zip code. Yeah, and of course, for anyone that's uh, obviously visited Starbase recently, you'll notice that there is actually new signs being put up around the place saying Starbase since if uh, since that resolution got passed quite recently. Mm. Yeah, it looks like a different building. No, it's a different building. Isn't it? Be interesting to see where that medical building's actually gone, though. Yeah, they can't get rid of that. Skip in the skip. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. All right, while we're go. here, oh, go on. Yeah, while we're here, a uh, quick question from Liam Donald: uh, What's the status of the old solar farm site? Yeah, well, there it is. Not been, a lot, really. It's been covered in gravel and had one building put on it, and the panels have finally been moved. Yeah, they've done a bit of groundwork by the looks of it. Oh, um, I guess it, I wouldn't be surprised though if this area becomes, this whole area becomes a car park, even if it's just temporary. Whilst they uh, construct a new multi-story building in the uh, near the base. I'll just quickly go here on the way through. This is a storage lot <clears throat> down on um, Highway Four, not far from Macy's. And it seems to be a place where they're putting things, because a lot of the sites now, there's not a lot of room left at a lot of the sites for things like this to be stored. So, like, these things used to be near the GSC building, etc. So they're clearing up a lot of space around Starbase in general and storing stuff in here. I think a lot of this and, uh... pipe, pipe work used to be near the Star Factory. Oh, and this is actually... Area. And this is one of many storage areas that SpaceX do actually have, because um, they do actually have a place near, near the Brunswick Airport. And there's another place, I think, a few miles away. That's another warehouse that they're storing things in. So, yeah, it's uh, they definitely need them to branch out a lot with storage yards and warehouses. Uh, Dave made the observation that they're loading panels onto a truck here. Yeah, it looks oh, like they're using oh, yeah. that green skid loader to move those piles of panels in that semi there. 
Well, people did wonder what was going to happen with these panels. Um, well, there's your answer. Being loaded into the semi and going somewhere. All right, let's finally get to the launch site, shall we? <laughs> Okay, well, let's start down at this lock there because that's probably where the biggest news is with this new manifold. Yes, pretty intense. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, about that for a second, Ryan, please? Yeah, so this is obviously new. Um, before, um, they just had the ends of these um, nitrogen or the, the gaseous nitrogen outlets um, basically had a little flap door on them, so... Uh, as it started to boil off, the the vapor would just come out. So there's a there's a good picture there. So yeah, since they've added these uh, the four extra uh, subcoolers, uh, they've decided to to change that setup a little bit. So they're actually piping uh, that away from the farm. Um, so they're just paired by twos. And they go into a larger pipe, and uh, they pipe them over. And um, we started to see this develop with you know a lot of these larger long pipes show up, and it seemed pretty inevitable that that's what they were actually going to to do with this and not entirely sure um i guess the purpose there i mean there could be any number of of reasonings um i've heard everything from uh you know if they have to send anybody out here to to work on equipment it's better to be you know dumping uh that gaseous nitrogen um, away from uh the employees or the workers um it could also be a situation where they don't want to to vent any of the uh the colder vapor directly onto any of these metal structures that they've they've added especially the valves that are down underneath uh that that roof there so um there's probably a, a whole number of reasons um i am curious to see if they do anything on the methane side because as of right now i don't think they doesn't look like they've uh, done anything yet but obviously these are brand new photos so we'll see if they they end up doing anything um but um yeah, we'll see if they, they do anything over here um, with the methane side. And we've got our beautiful tank support system going on. It looks a bit ugly. <laughs> it's um, it's something. And uh, it's been fun watching them trying to construct that, especially when it's come to try and get in the uh, big dent of the GSC-7 cross shell. Uh, that's been quite entertaining. Yeah, the amount of work that's gone into it kind of implies they plan to keep those two shells around for, I'm going to guess, more than one launch. Uh, this seems quite overkill for, for one launch, at least. Um, so Yeah, well, I, I agree with that. It's This definitely isn't a one launch thing. So. Uh, they've welded these braces, to, I can see it here, they've welded the braces on the middle, these cross braces, and there's the odd one. Jake and I OCD were going, oh, it's all crooked, but they haven't been welded in there quite yet. Yeah, I was quite surprised about how flimsy those cross pieces actually are. But I guess if it's just for dealing with torsional forces, then yeah, I guess it'll do. Well, another idea is they've got the cross braces to stop these uh, eye beams from twisting, I guess. Um, it's been speculated that it could also produce a cell here which with for the acoustic shock waves to somehow propagate in here and perhaps we will see a covering. I don't know about that. There's speculation there may be a second skin put on, but maybe not. <clears throat> well, all I can say is if they are going to do that, they might want to uh, start getting that installed fairly soon. Because, uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit more welding with that. Absolutely. So it seems to be a lot, I mean, we knew there was going to be quite a bit of work going on, I mean, with all this new hippos and that, but there seems to be a massive amount more work going on now in between launch two and three, which may have yeah. been brought forward even. Yeah, I've been quite surprised just just how much they've actually done after IFT2. Um, there was obviously a lot of work here we did expect to see, but stuff like adding those pipes onto those hippos, I mean, that's... Didn't quite expect that. And then tanks just being ripped out. And yeah, it's been quite full on. So this yeah, one thing, go on. if you wanted to go back to a, an aerial photo, there's one other thing I was going to mention. 
we can kind of tell where um, the precast concrete walls are going to go based on where they've cut the concrete. Um, so actually going to cover seemingly more area than the old HESCO barriers. Um, so maybe uh, SpaceX is trying to, to protect the infrastructure a little bit more. Um, but uh, that's one thing to, to mention is it does seem to reach a little bit uh, further to the right, um, especially toward the, the fluids bunker. Um, but uh, yeah. one thing of note, I think these are actually taller too. So uh, that should help with, uh, I guess, throwing debris over here in this area. Yeah, and I guess uh, SpaceX don't want the back of their electrical bunker being rearranged again either. Uh, one of these, this photo, we can see the rebar sticking out the back of these preformed um, sections. And in this aerial here, we can see there's room here for a concrete slab back here. And that will give the rigidity, the strength, so they don't fall over to these vertical bars. And they are yet to see, they'll be spilling down these sections with concrete. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in here, and there's. I mean, in the, oh, go. On. I, don't, I mean, in the future, this this should be more berm once they finally get permission to build on the wetlands there. But yeah, this this should hold up a lot better than what was there before until they can actually extend the berm. It is something to note too that uh, the addition of uh, the structure and especially the new valve assembly behind the the lock hippos there starting to eat into their space to move equipment in and out kind of back here. It's, it's getting pretty, pretty small, especially given uh, how high up the, the rebar is coming out of the back of those precast concrete slabs that uh, the, there's going to be either a slope or a, a block of concrete back here or something. Uh, but it's going to, they're, they're cutting off a little bit of their uh, accessibility back here. But, um, you know, as they finish this tank farm, we'll have to see if they uh, open up another spot somewhere else to, to get large equipment back there. I know one of my initial concerns was, you know, if they have these here and they need to move a piece of equipment back here, it's going to get pretty, pretty, you know, slim. Um, obviously, they're not going to be able to fit a uh, the big crane back here, but uh, they do have the ability to unbolt these uh, at the flanges. So if they need to take them off, they can. Um, but uh, the width is, I guess, what uh, appears to be. Yeah, the flanges are a little bit, yeah, right there. Yeah, to the left. Uh, yep, right right there where you're, yeah. So the width is, I guess, what kind of concerns me now is they're not really going to be able to get any super heavy equipment back here if they have to do anything. But um, hopefully they can reach everything they need to from uh, kind of the front side of the farm. That's fairly high under there, at least. Yeah, though they should be able to drive uh, some of the cranes, uh, the, the fold-out cranes underneath there. Um, but yeah, they're definitely not getting anything super tall or big back here. Uh, without kind of squeezing through. All right, awesome. Thanks, Ryan. So we should see scaffold missing inside. Oh, that's a great photo of the glass plates and everything. Yeah, they've uh, retracted all the arms, but it looks of it and all the QBs. Yeah, all of the uh, the burn panels are gone too, so they have not reinstalled those yet. You can actually see the uh, the bar, um, I guess the vertical pieces of metal that they presumably are bolting those burn panels to on some of the uh, the sections there. That little piece there. Yeah, there's kind of a two pairs of them. There's yeah, right there by your hand. There's two rusty vertical pieces. Uh, that's what would go towards the top, and then down below, there's uh, you can see two that are close together. But I think there's one on the left, and then another one on the right, because there's technically like two sections of panels down there. So they presumably bolt the the burn panels to uh, those little parts that that stick out. It's um, it's also worth noting as well they're testing all the, uh, the arms again in the clamps. They've got the the little uh, jig set up in the middle there. Oh, they have two, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, here they're, here they're out. Oh, oh wow. So <laughs> I just noticed that. I thought this was a different, I guess, flyover, but they must be, they were actively testing them during the flyover. Does look that way. 
I'll have to have a close look at the timestamps on the actual photos on the met, on the metadata. Because yeah, they're definitely yeah. That is pretty cool. We might actually be able to tell where they're connecting uh, that jig to specifically on those arms with it folded back. I think that's maybe been a little bit of a mystery. Okay, I'm not sure we've got. Oh, that's a bit better. So this scaffold in the middle here is to do with this testing as well, I guess. Yeah, it's just something to put that on top of and to just help lift it up. Kind of expected to see a lot of scaffold missing inside here, but there's still a lot of scaffold there. I was going to say, it seems like there's more scaffold in there compared to last time. Yeah, the bucket might not have been empty. It might have actually been full. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of look that way. <laughs> Yeah, Ryan's referring to, we saw on the cameras some um, baskets going in and out of here to do with scaffolding, and we assume that they are removing scaffold, but nope. So lots of work, and even on the, um, I was surprised, even on the OLM itself, how much work they've done since Flight 2. I mean, I wonder if the OLM was damaged a bit more than they first thought, and realizing they needed to do lots of work in here they went on to do all this other work like all this sort of work that they might not have had to do otherwise or might not have had time to do otherwise but now they do have time yeah that'd be a possibility yeah i could see all the the options there I, I think you know they may be preparing the olm to to last you know four consecutive launches without major refurbishment so Maybe it made sense to to do that sort of stuff now and get some of those things out of the way. I mean, there is one thing we do know for sure is uh, SpaceX have actually been planning to do the next two launches um, under that same license. So they're definitely preparing for at least at least two launches in quick succession. I think. So, so they've, yeah, been not... they've been painting the legs, Find a... and the uh, booster QD hood as well. Yeah, fresh paint usually means fire, so that assumingly means that uh, we're getting close here to some of the, the testing and uh, hopefully a launch. Oh, this photo will do. We can see they've you've got the grey paint and they've got some black. I'm thinking that's an undercoat. Perhaps they'll go grey eventually. Oh, we can, didn't notice that. We can see inside. Cool. See some of the mechanism in there. This door must have a weird one of those weird hinges that go around the corner. <clears throat> you have to get fixes yeah. to the back of it, kind of, and it kind of folds its way in with like two pivot points. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised about that change after the uh, the doors got blown off during IT, uh, IFT one. <laughs> those doors used to be uh, stainless steel, kind of raw color and now they're uh, quite yeah. charred <laughs> i think at one point we, we thought they were maybe painted or they got rid of the stainless steel but no it just got pretty pretty charred on the, the last launch okay well let's go over to the amenities building see what they've done there so oh and there is one other small change there yeah. as well they've uh cutting up yet more concrete on the orbital pad um, they've done this quite a few times over the last few months now. We go to the right near the boom. Ah, that concrete. I thought you meant under the LLM. No. So yeah, so we've seen this, quite a lot. What's in this area? The big cryo pipes are over here, and then there's the ones going over the tower under here somewhere. Yeah, this is a little bit, the, the cryo pipes going to both the OLM and the tower um, are actually right about where your cursor was. Um, kind of, uh, no, a little, they're actually further um, up uh, between like the diggers there. Um, kind of where the, uh, actually a little bit more, I believe they're right, uh, actually a little bit down. <laughs> they're kind of right in the area between those two trenches that they've got kind of coming from the berm. Yeah, right through there, I believe, is where both of those bunkers are. And the one breaks off a little bit to the the bottom, and then over, and the tower one goes toward the top and over. So um, they're digging a little bit further away from uh, the tops of those those vaults. And once yeah, again, it's, it's... 
an unusual shape as well, which is always a mystery. It's likely just more cracking in the concrete again. It's um I think at some point they're gonna have to rip up all the concrete surrounding the all end there and just redo the whole thing as one big pour if they can. It's, uh, it's becoming quite a patchwork of concrete. Speaking yeah, of right. concrete pours. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. this looks a bit better this time. <laughs> oh, they've taken the boxing off. Also, the formwork off. Awesome. So they got it right this time. So we didn't hear the last time they did this. They had a little blowout in one of the... I'm not sure which wall it was. They had a little blowout in one of the formwork and they had to pull all of the half poured concrete and rebar, which is over here. Out and they've had to put the formwork rebar back in, formwork back up, and repour the whole thing, which they've done in quite a short amount of time, to be honest. Yeah, I was going to say I was quite impressed with how quickly they uh, basically were able to rip all that failed uh, pours, you know, equipment out and and get it back together. So really impressive. So yesterday we were in show and tell, speculating whether the concrete had been poured, and we worked out it had been poured because we saw concrete on the rebar and on the formwork as well and it looks like they're pulling the the cross supports out here so that's all so i guess oh yeah and i guess <laughs> uh yeah and i guess one of the next things we're going to be probably expect now is to uh see them putting all the shore and up inside of that building ready for putting the roof over the top of it yeah those pillars or they here. may yeah or they oh yeah i'll put the pillars in as well maybe maybe some other hardware as well and then probably the roof so that's the development on that building it's still a, a weird shape so i wonder if this wall being like that you would think it's not for artistic value but maybe something to do with how shock waves go around corners perhaps or something why i should just ask a question why do you think that's on an angle It's an artistic thing. I, I think it's artistic. Idea, yeah, it's yeah, it's just a design they chose. I, I feel like I'm I'm not really sure there's really a, a purpose to it. Now, if something else, you know, shows up and it looks like it fits there, then we might have a, a different answer. But yeah, I think it's just a styling thing. Okay. And there was a couple of windows. Oh, there's still a couple of windows and a door. I think there's a window on this face as well. Uh, over there, yeah. I think it is. yeah, and there's another one down in the foot, basically to your right as well on the other side. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's looking a lot better this time. Oh, there's one here. Is that the one with the angles? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's go over to Suborbital Tank Farm where we've seen well, a tank get moved go on jack i was uh yeah pretty much just gonna repeat what you said it's um we had a vertical tank removed from the methane part of the tank farm um and so then in the... its place is a shorter tank was put there is it this one um no there's a go a bit up up a little bit there's another yeah, so see where the blue machine is. I think just in front of that, you see there's a bit of a, a bit of a concrete pad there. I think that's maybe where one of the tanks was. Um, Didn't they put it does it in, the, in it at the same time before they packed the crane up? So one of these has been, like that, for instance, has been taken out and another one put in its place, I thought. You, yeah, that did seem. Although, yeah, it's quite hard to tell from the ground exactly what was moved where, but it did look like it was in the methane part of the tank farm. Um, so yeah, I guess they they wanted one of the tanks for masses, um, and then of course they probably yeah they had to replace that tank with something else, um, until the suborbital tank farm eventually meets its end. Okay, so like I said, there's not a lot of grand, groundbreaking sort of new stuff, but just lots of little things all over the place have been added to and continue to be 
added on to that we've known about for some time. Yeah. So let's go have a look at the new tanks. We might just about wrap it up then. We've got 10 minutes. There was one small thing as well. They did, uh, obviously, they've reported all the Fondag and the test on Bino, so that should be ready for testing again soon. Also, uh, I do have to admit the concrete, if we zoom out and go to the, the top uh, bunker, um, I've been waiting for them to actually, actually, next photo over, I think, shows the, the new gate. I've been waiting for them to pour the concrete there next to that for um, like two years now. So it's uh, very, uh, very excited to see that concrete finally poured because uh, it's been a dirt patch for the longest time. Yeah, I just yeah, realized I... it does actually look like they're going to extend that security hut as well. That doesn't look like that's actually the full length it is now. Looks like it definitely has the option for that. Now, these two, are, that's a ramp and this is flat. So that's a sloping piece right there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, nothing at Starbase is flat. That, that's one thing I'll, I'll say as uh, someone who's been there several times now, that from the photos, you know, the concrete kind of looks a little flat, but you go there and you look at it, nothing is flat. Everything has a slope to it. Yeah, we're out there. We're 10 minutes off two hours, aren't we? Just have to make sure. Thanks, Jen. So um, this trench, we saw this thing marked out the last time we had a flyover. We just saw it in red. And talking to Dave and a couple of others, we think, there's a vault in here that may have something to do with communications from the suborbital tank farm area. Maybe they're yeah. linking it all together. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is conduit and that sort of stuff in that area. And you can see look at the end of it, you've got a big uh, big old opening at the end. Hmm, another great mystery there. Okay, let's go over to the plumbing over here. There seems to be a bit more plumbing going on. Oh, or not. Those three pipes in... I think those three pipes in last time. I think they've been getting a lot of the smaller stuff in as well since uh, last time. And along there as well, I think they've been doing a bit more. Yep, this is all extended. Yeah, up past the... Ah, so they are going to go with these big yep. stands all yep. the way through. Yep. So I guess they'll be able to back the trucks under these or at least back up near and be able to walk underneath to get the hoses in here yeah i'll be honest I, <laughs> i'm not a fan of this pipework being sort of outside of the uh tank farm perimeter like that but well here's a truck yeah, here so they can't come forward much more they really have to stay that far back and the lines through here so it looks like they are going to fit underneath yeah i'm kind of surprised they didn't build anything to go over the current um, pipework that's kind of fixed on that wall. I'm kind of surprised that they're they're bringing it out as far as that they, they have. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's a bit of an odd one, obviously, all that pipework just outside like that. It's, yeah. Well, it is what it is, and that's what we're going to see. So, um Ah, oh, just to mention the wall, they've added onto the wall and they've boxed up the rest of the wall and they'll bring in the last tank in from the front like they did this tank. It looks like the walls... Oh, they've got another little section still to go. Yeah, they still have yeah. some. They probably want to get that up and just out of the way for the next flight um, and they can add in that little bit once they, they add the, the final bit of tanks there. Okay, and quickly, we haven't seen the crane. A lot of speculation what's going on with the crane. The A-frame's off. There's a frame around that can take the actual chassis off the turntable. Um, I think it's that. And there's been no parts leave the site. So we're still, which shows that it's more likely just maintenance on the pins and maybe yeah. a maintenance on the whole structure, It's the whole crane itself. Yeah, and obviously they've had a few problems with pulling pins out of the boom and um, they've had to employ a lot of techniques to try and get those pins out because obviously this crane hasn't really been properly maintained for the last, well, since they've had it really, hasn't quite had heavy maintenance like this in that time. So I guess it's not a surprise it's taken this long at the moment. And I guess we'd nearly have to have this crane back together and parked over where it belongs 
over here before the next launch, I would imagine. It's my, another thought I had as well. And, of course, they can't do any other start fire testing until that crane's back together. Yeah. The ships. Yeah, true. Yeah, I right think I... They're, they're getting that crane ready for kind of a, a busy year or so afterward, because I imagine they they'll probably use it um, a little bit uh, related to the second tower, uh, if they have to, unless a second crane shows up. So they, uh, they're they probably planning for it to have a pretty busy year ahead of it. Uh, so it's good to get that maintenance done now. All right, Joe, we'll get some last donations and questions, please. We're only five minutes out. Thank you very much. Indeed. I want to thank James L. for a $10 super chat. When do you think they will launch? February, March, or May? Why isn't April an option? <laughs> It's a good question. There's still a lot Poor of work. April. <laughs> yeah, or April. Yeah, there's a lot of things, a lot of work to get, like things to get out of the way. I mean, technically, they've got the equipment that they can launch with the tank farm and everything, but obviously, there's lots of things that need to be moved before launch. So it's a good question. It's always a good question. It's always difficult to answer. I mean, uh, I, uh, I'm sort of leaning maybe towards end of February, start of March. At the earliest um obviously we do know now on the regulatory side of things that they obviously they have done the investigation um and it looks like the faa do actually have the results of that um so yeah i guess it's a case of just getting all the uh corrective actions done if they've come up with a list of that those yet which they've probably done the most most of by now um and then as it when it comes to actual hardware readiness not entirely sure um because it's hard to predict exactly what spacex want in place before the next launch um and how much more expanding they want to do yeah i'd agree with that i think um probably mid to late february looks like a good uh, estimate um i think you know a lot of the small stuff on the the launch mount they can get done pretty quickly um you know i wouldn't be surprised if we were to to see it um, able to accept a booster in the next, um, you know, maybe week and a half, two weeks. Um, and then we'll have to see if, uh, if 28 is really, you know, getting a, a deep, uh, maintenance done on it, or if it's just going to be there for a, a brief moment. But, um, as soon as they can get both of those vehicles out here and stacked and, and start testing, that's probably our, our best estimate for when they can fly. But, um, from what I'm able to see here, I, I think probably, you know, mid to late February is a, a good target. Agreed. Due to time time constraints, uh, I do uh, I, I, we're not going to be able to get to everybody's comments or questions, but um, I did have one from about half hour into the show where we started and uh, wanted to touch on it from All Things Space Thirty Three. What stage in what stage of construction for OLIT two would the water cooled steel plate be installed? I personally think. It will. They will install it during the construction of the main OLM legs. Would you agree? Yeah, I'd say that uh, sounds pretty plausible. Yeah, I think. Um, I feel like the next one is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be constructed the, the same way. So, um, I think really anything is uh, possible. Um, they definitely want to keep it clear of debris. So. Um, we'll definitely have to take precautions if they install it before uh, the main um, structure ring is, is lowered onto the legs because there's probably going to be a lot of welding, a lot of slag, a lot of stuff dropping down on the, uh, the plate. So they'll definitely want to keep something covered if they, if they do have it in there already. Agreed. And along the same lines, uh, Will asks, if the land that they want to develop Tower 2 doesn't exist yet, why even begin constructing the launch tower segments at Sanchez? Seems pretty far until they're needed. Well, there's a couple of thoughts on that, and it depends on where the tower goes. If the tower goes out here, it's going to take a long time to get the paperwork through to start with. And the same with this section up here, even though they're looking at buying it, it's going to take a long time to get the paperwork through. So there's a good chance that the tower is going to go where they've already got land clear like here especially since they're not going to need this here anymore and i don't know that at all that's only a guess as well uh, so they could put the tower and launch ring here which in which case they won't need as much lead-in time for the other two for the other bits of land here and there 
It's my and then the um, and then the other thing is there's obviously with the tower sections there's still a lot of outfitting to be done on a few of the sections for that tower. Um, so yeah, that'll fill it fill in a lot of the time. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. All right, Joe, have we cleared the line? Uh, that's all the time we've got for questions today. So we'll we'll just go ahead and end it there. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off first, and I'll thank you very much, Ryan Hanson and Jake, for uh, joining in the stream today. It's been a great stream, and you're very much helpful with the stream. And Joe, thank you as well, and thank uh, Emlyn for the turning the knobs and pushing the buttons in the background. And uh, I'll see you next time, everyone. Bye. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a pleasure joining again, and obviously getting to enjoy f- super fresh photos along the audience. It's uh, yeah, it's been pretty cool, and I look forward to the next stream. And I'll pass it over to Ryan. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Uh, it's been uh, an exciting flyover as we kind of learn everything that's new with uh, everybody who's viewing this as well. Uh, it's it's pretty exciting that SpaceX has so many kind of projects going on in parallel. So as we zip around between the different sites, there's exciting stuff to look at uh, pretty much in every photo. So um, it's, a, it's a really cool time to be following this stuff. And thanks to RGV, we, uh, we get all these unique views. So uh, definitely a good, good deal to be uh, following all of the, the RGV stuff. Agreed. Thanks for your time and knowledge there, Ryan Hansen. Appreciate you. Jake, you as well. Stephanie, thanks for driving and making a good show happen here. Uh, Emlyn, thank you for your uh, awesome uh, stream engineering skills and uh, pushing the buttons and turning the knobs, like Steph said. And uh, thanks to the RGB team for getting these awesome images for us. Thank you all. Awesome chat. Awesome supporters. You're all appreciated. Booster engine cutoff. Stage step and stage. Hot stage confirmed. <laughs> Love you. Bye.